Uh, good evening to one and all present here. Now let us start the meeting. Good evening to one and all present here. Well, on behalf of the management, staff, and the, the, the principal, HOD, staff and students of St. Mother Teresa Engineering College, I welcome everybody present here. The two, uh, resource person of the day is Dr. P. Ebidarne, Dr. Professor and Head, the uh, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Raja Rajeshwari College of Engineering, Bangalore. And he has rich experience in teaching, research and industry of the past 27 years. And he has published 16 papers in Well and Good Scopus Index and very well known journals. And he has presented various papers in conferences. And he, he, he is a well known, above all, he is a well known person to me. While in SCAT College of Engineering and Technology, Trinalveli, he was the in charge of electrical machines lab and he converted the lab into very good ultra modern lab. So, with, yes, with such a resource person, we are very, very happy to have him. Today, oh, he is going to talk about commercialization of lab technologies. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I hand over the session directly to Dr. Ebi Darne, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. You can start now. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your brief introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I deem it to be a great pleasure to be a part of this uh, event today. Uh, I am very happy that I have been cordially welcomed for this particular event. I wholeheartedly thank the management, especially uh, Professor George Clinton, Planning, Planning and Development, and IAC President, Department Head, uh, Mr. Ibanesha Praveen, and also the department IAC coordinator, uh, Mr. I.F.S. Srinivasan, sir, for uh, taking such initiative and taking uh, good efforts for uh, uh, making this day come true. A cordial welcome for all the participants, both uh, my learned faculty members and the students, those who are uh, attending today's event. So today's topic, what I have preferred is commercialization of lab technologies. Uh, we have been hearing plenty of words as like idea, ideathon, hackathon, uh, innovation, a prototype, demo, plenty of other parameters we are having uh, hearing this and how we need to commercialize those products or designs what it is coming to our mind into a financial aspect. This is what the out outline of the today's presentation. So first two slide is like uh, just a thought process. If someone sells a car, just listen, if someone sells a car, he no longer owns it. But if someone sells ideas, he still owns it. In fact, he can sell many times. This is the difference between a thing what we own and the idea or the thought provoke what we are getting. So this has been stated by one uh, uh, Mr. Adam Smith in the year 1964. So thing is like owning a car or a bungalow or a, you know, a rich apartment is something different. Rather, selling our ideas or uh, you know, selling our knowledge, that is different. Okay, so this is how we are going to uh, proceed with. So now there is a difference between research and another one parameter like innovation and what we are going to discuss today, commercialization. Can anyone from the crowd, can you differentiate between the research, innovation, and the commercialization? Anybody, any students? Any one student? Yes? Research, innovation, and uh, commercialization. Uh, students, whether you have heard these words, this is now the buzzing words, you know, research, innovation, commercialization, or not buzzing words. In current era, it is buzzing words. Wherever you go, you you know, you have to, you are hearing the, such words. Can you able to differentiate it? Anybody? Either it, it may be wrong, no problem. Anyone? Yeah, fine, no problem. I, I know, you know, uh, attending a webinar, that too in a weekend, uh, Saturday evening, 6.30 to 7.30, it is very, very tough situation for you. But you as students, as emerging budding engineers, you should know the difference between research, innovation, and commercialization. First parameter is research. 
research can be defined as the search for knowledge or as any systematic investigation with an open mind to establish novel facts, solve new or existing problems. There are many things we can leave it off. The very first thing that comes in our mind when we are hearing this word research is like we want to discover something new. We have to uh, you know, create uh, something new to the society and we have to uh, earn our own reputation in this market for creating something new. This is the mindset that comes in everybody's mind, including me when I was a student. But, you know, any modification or any fine tuning or some sort of alteration, if you can do what is existing today, that itself is said to be research. Some sort of novelty, if you can show to the things what is being existing in this current era, that itself is a research. Whereas, innovation. Innovation is a tangible product or services or process that is adaptable or diffusible. Meaning is like, it can be used in various contexts by different individuals. Which means that X and Y are two members. Both have been given with two different products. But their perspective level will be different. They can create based upon their own ideas. That is called the innovation. Any novel thing, if you are making that, you can say as research. Whereas innovation is with respect to an individual. Okay, We will have our own individual capability of making things in a different way or in a different style. That is called the innovation. Hope uh, you got the difference between research and innovation. Now coming to the commercialization. This is the place where we are lacking with. And this is the need of the hour as far as India is concerned. Because in Western countries and all, you know, commercialization has become, uh, uh, you know, that has been uh, 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 occurring for years together in the past. But as far as India is concerned, we have got good knowledge. We have got sufficient education. We have got good team spirit. And we have got self-confidence. We have got the potential to create certain things new. But we don't know how to commercialize it, how to market it, how to earn out of it. That is not known for us. How can you define it? Commercialization is a process of introducing a new product or service or process or any methodology into the market. If you are introducing something new into the market and if you can develop a business out of it, it is said to be commercialization. Okay, so these are the difference between uh, all the three. First one is uh, research. Research is some sort of novelty if you can make from what is being existing today that is called as research. And uh, innovation depends upon people. I will have my own thought. You will have one another thought. For example, IFS Universal Sir will have his own perception of uh, thinking. So that is uh, innovation. To their knowledge capability, we can innovate. That is innovation. Commercialization is completely different from that which is most important at this point as like taking the product or services or the process what we have been rendering in the past into the markets, which will be useful for the society in many ways or in any one way and to make a business out of it. That is called the commercialization. Now you may be wondering whether I can do a business out of uh, uh, you know the, uh, the, the, the basic technology what I learned. Definitely, yes. Everybody can go for a commercialization, provided there are certain norms and there are certain policies that we need to, we need to adhere. Now, coming to commercialization, we are going to discuss about commercialization, its pros and cons, what and all are the challenges for commercial. This is what we are going to discuss in uh, today's uh, webinar. First thing you need to have in your mind, commercialization is a non-linear process. Okay, it's not just a, you know, it's not a, just a very uh, very easy task or like uh, when you are throwing a rubber ball onto a wall, definitely it will come back. That we know it is going to happen. But in commercialization, there will be certain hidden agenda in the market which is unknown. That is what we are saying as it is a non-linear process. A thorough study should be made before or like a, 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 a pakka market analysis you should make before entering into this commercialization. Second point is like it is related to a business development. We are entering into a field, a new field, business, because 
we have been uh, you know in your uh, college also you will be having entrepreneurship development cell there you will be you will be given with plenty of guest lectures invited talks seminars and you know it will be in such a way like some thoughts uh, will be kindled out of your mind okay so now this business everybody will be talking about business how to start a business how to run a business that we all don't know so this when you are going to when you are having a mindset to go for a commercialization definitely you should have in your mind as like this you are going to enter into a business field okay and this commercialization can be of governments and even non government uh, markets are also there who can promote our uh, ideas okay so this uh, this is all about uh, commercialization basic so this is a non linear process ups and downs will be there we should expect both the pros as well as the cons when you are entering into the market second thing is you are entering into a business you are going to do your own startup okay so you need to face the market and the third one is uh, you can go with either uh, government or you can go for non government market also now uh, this is the uh, prime slide uh, this will be your uh, take away today commercialization of knowledge we all are having knowledge of various capabilities god have created all of us with some uh, for for some cause with different abilities okay so first you know there are certain steps for uh, commercializing so first thing is like idea or innovative discovery or innovative technology that everybody will have that your own idea right from the morning when you wake from your bed till you go to your bed you are coming across plenty of incidents many happenings you are crossing in day to day life am i correct or not in everywhere you will come across many ideas but due to certain hesitation due to certain reluctance you are stopping your idea without implementing it okay so first thing is idea okay so everybody will get then uh, get idea so soon when you are getting an idea based upon your technology for example i am an electrical engineer students will be few students so would have, you know from electrical department also you would have been joined very first year when you are stepping into your college when you are entering into the lab everything will be new for you am i correct or not say yes or no when you are entering into a lab for example basic lab when you are entering into the basic lab when you are switch, when you are seeing the switches ammeter voltmeter wattmeter plenty of different equipments big transformer auto transformer when you are seeing this uh, equipments definitely uh, you will be you know uh, many question marks will come to your mind how i am going to deal with uh, what i am going to study new in this technology what technology i am going to learn am i correct or not yes students any one say yes i will continue yeah fine, fine fine thank you thank you okay so uh, at that place you know ideas is being generated new ideas are dulled at that at that at that point but we will not ask to our faculty members or technicians and that idea are getting suppressed first you need to come out of that the idea whatever is being generated immediately the second is you need to try it in your own lab we we are having sophisticated labs or you know a mediocre level lab where our ideas can be implemented we can test those ideas and the next thing is like if we need to evaluate whether the idea what has come to my mind will be a workable model whether i can create that into a workable model whether the society will accept whether this idea will be long lasting there are plenty of uh, rubrics by which you can evaluate within your lab level this and all You can, it can happen within the premises itself. Uh, for you know, uh, if I am not wrong, many applied labs and all would have come in the past one year. Uh, I am hearing plenty of applied labs and new technologies. Uh, many skill development programs are being conducted for the students. Uh, it's it's a very good platform. It's a very good forum for the students to have your own uh, thought process. You can think out of box, out of academics. You can uh, think because. 15 to 20 years back when i was doing my engineering whatever the syllabus is there machines one machines two emt what and all are there you know after 20 years world has changed a lot industry expectation is plenty still you are studying machines one machines two and uh, 
uh, EMT solid state drives on. Am I correct or not? Okay, this is this is there is no meaning in complaining the education system or there is no meaning in complaining the you know teaching learning process. No, there is a forum if you are getting a laboratory or if you are getting an applied lab such platforms. We need to capitalize those uh, platforms. Okay, so this and all can be done. We are having good faculty members. You can uh, create your own peer groups. You can uh, you can create your own uh, uh, individual groups. So three or four good students. You can join together. Take up your idea towards a creative model. Especially final year students, you can materialize it in your projects. At least you can do it in your project. Don't go behind the project centers. Something will be there. At least you can develop a voltmeter. You you develop a voltmeter. Okay, you develop a voltmeter. That that is a, that is a good good project actually. Okay, this is just an example. Whatever you have studied in the previous past in the seventh semester, you can put as a prototype. That's it. That is called a, a project. The next level is prototype. And now this prototype will have some uh, clarifications. Many people will have their own comments on this prototype. And once those are being rectified, you can pack it and make it as a product. This is the fifth level. First is idea. Second is uh, modeling within the lab. Then ups and downs evaluation you can do with your own rubrics. Then you make it as a prototype, as like a project kit. What you say as a kit, you know, that you can do. Then you can make as a product like product, uh, product structure, uh, a, a pakka finished product structure. Then you can give to external evaluation. Initially, you will be doing the evaluation within your, your lab. Now, there are plenty of other external vendors. You can communicate with them. They will come and evaluate. They will give ISO certification. You would have seen, you know, in, in all the uh, products, what you buy, you'll be, that will be certified by different concerts. That and all are evaluation. And finally, if you feel that your own product, what you have designed, is nowhere found in this globe, you can go for licensing. That is a tedious process. That is an end process. Even if you are skipping those, if you can get that evaluation done in the sixth stage, you are ready to run a business in the markets. Okay. So that is the uh, prime focus. That should be the prime focus for every engineer. Not to work under someone, someone for earning. You should have a mindset to you know make few works in your concern. So that is how you can uh, uh, you can be a role model in the society as a successful engineer. So first, this uh, slide, you know, this will be the takeaway. This you need to have in your mind. First is ideas. You should not run. Uh, you should not uh, question yourself where I will go and get it. Damn sure, everybody are having your own ideas, and that can be checked in the lab. You can evaluate yourself. If possible, you can make it as a prototype. Then you can create as like a complete product. Then you can go for evaluation. Once that evaluation is done, then your business has been started. Initially, struggles will be there. But once when you can reach few people, damn sure if your product is good enough, if it is competent enough to you know compete with whatever is being existing today, definitely you can reach more heights. If you feel it is highly novel, nobody else has produced such an innovative product, definitely you can go for the next level as like patenting or you know getting a license for that technology. This is the commercialization of knowledge. Everybody is having knowledge. You are going to sell your knowledge for your business. That's why. That's what. That's what I'm trying to convey. You are going to sell your knowledge. Everybody is having knowledge. That ideas that you are going to sell for your own prosperity. You are not going to sell your brain for someone else's prosperity. Okay, that's the difference. Feel that difference. Now, if you want to go for the commercialization, first three prerequisites are there. as like a preambles. Three different uh, things you have to study. First one is like a need that will trigger the demand. Customers need. Every day, the need of the customer can change. Yesterday's Requirement is not today. Today's will not be tomorrow. Tomorrow's will not be there uh, after a month and after a year. Okay, I think you all will agree with me. So this is the first one. What is required today for him or her? That is the first one. Second one is a, a research result that will make a difference. A commercial value. What What is, you know, uh, daily what and all uh, people use, that product you should not uh, stick on to. You should have, uh, you should show a difference. You should think differently. And you should see that the product, what you do or you produce, will have a commercial value in the market. 
Last one is a business opportunity that will allow market success. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you will feel like uh, you are having one idea and you are going to generate that idea into a very big product. Uh, for example, I will say, for an example, uh, if you are uh, producing uh, uh, an woolen cloth and if you are trying to uh, do that business in the market at Trinal Valley, whether it is possible, it is not possible. That you can do in Shimbla or Darjeeling, that will be successful. But if you are uh, trying to uh, sell a sweater, of a different uh, style, you know, that will not uh, be a successful in Thirinal Valley. So that is what I'm trying to say. A business opportunity, you should search for a, an opportunity. You should have a thorough analysis about the market before in rendering into that uh, field. Okay, so this is, these are the three prerequisites for uh, this commercialization. Now, under the three key players are there. Three key players. First one is researchers or scientists, as like you. Second one is business people and third one is funding bodies. These three were the key players for any commercialization, technological com commercialization. First, scientists or researchers. As like you and me, or X or Y or Z, we should have our own time for doing the research. Without giving proper time, without spending proper time, without rendering enough time, we cannot come out with innovative ideas. That is first. If we are not self-motivated, if we are not having self-confidence, and if we are not having that thought, that, th that thought process, out-of-box thinking, we cannot come out with great ideas. Okay, so that is first one. Second one is business people. The one who is around you, who is ready to invest for you. Someone should invest for you. All will not have bond with, uh, would not have bond with silver spoons. Okay, ideas will be there. We will be searching for certain people who can take our ideas towards a market for that business people. What will be the uh, thought process of a business people? They will be ready to invest, but they will readily, in, I mean, I mean uh, they will immediately expect the return back from that investment. That will be their mindset, business people mindset. So you should have a balance between those business people also. And finally, funding bodies. Funding bodies, there are uh, government fund, funding bodies and non-government funding bodies. Normally, funding bodies, what we can have have in our mind is like uh, uh, banks. Our ba banks, they are, they are pro providing subsidies, they are providing loans for all sort of business, you know, technology, technological business and all, they are providing banks. They do have their own policies, their own uh, formats. So these and all should have a compliance, whatever we think that should have a compliance with them. These three, you know, it's like a triangular uh, struggle. Uh, scientists at one end, as like you and me, business people will be ready, few will be will be ready to sponsor, but they will be expecting back the amount uh, as early as possible. Okay, return on investment. What will be the return on investment? And funding bodies will have their own uh, process and procedure. So these will take and kill our time. So that's not that easy to make our ideas or innovations take directly towards the market and the commercial. So commercialization requires a matching the interest of these three key players. So everything should have a balance between each other for a successful commercialization. Now, what can be the government roles? In what way they can support commercialization? Slowly, the interest towards commercialization has uh, increased for government. Government is also taking plenty of initiatives to support. For example, you would have heard, you know, solar plantation, solar installation in agricultural lands, cultivation areas, government subsidies that we are all hearing for the past five years. <clears throat> they are uh, starting certain uh, 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 certain policies they are framing for the betterment of the upcoming new, new generation. So first point is maintaining and strengthening the research and development capacity of state colleges and universities. Every college doesn't have a research lab. Okay, a research lab and research and development lab is compulsory that should be made as a mandatory structure in every colleges and uh, universities. That is first point. Second one is encouraging homegrown businesses by providing support to entrepreneurs and small technology based firms. This is what we are uh, uh, recently uh, come across plenty of uh, buzzing words as like entrepreneurship. Why do we go for uh, foreign uh, uh, products? Why, do, why can't we? create of our own. 
how can you why can't we produce our own uh, uh, requirement how uh, why can't we meet our own requirement based upon the product and the process what we have in our mind so this encouraging of home grown whatever indians produce indians should use in that way that is called home grown business providing uh, providing support for it third one is facilitating the incorporation of new technology into process and products whatever the technology is coming in the western countries after 3 4 years only it will come to india this is what uh, the fate of india so that uh, facilitation because of certain government norms rules their own policies and structure blah blah you leave it off facilitating the incorporation of any technology that is coming into the globe immediately we should have a privilege to have that technology with us so that we as an engineers can step into that and start creating the process as well as product so that it will be helping for our own society and for our generation and the generation to come as well okay so these and all are the government roles that need to be taken for commercialization for easy commercial commercialization or facilitating commercialization by engineers as like you and me now finally i am going to touch with certain challenges you should not feel like oh, if we are having money and if you are having some uh, ideas definitely we can go for go and enter into the field that interest level is appreciable but we need to understand what and all are the risk factors behind that commercialization that is what i am going to say in one or two slides so first one is like a timeline timeline a commercialization activity is a long process overnight we cannot become a very big very big uh, big shot in business okay a business magnet or a business empire if you want to come in such a way it takes a lot of time not only with your idea you should have that spirit within you to take our idea towards the market to make it as a product to convince the people to get attracted towards your product and then take your business to the next level that is a time consuming process that is the first challenge second one is you and me as like you and me we do have plenty of ideas academically we will be very strong you will be having 9 cgpa 9.2 cgpa 8.5 cgpa everything will be there but we will not have got any industrial experience so if i am asking don't mistake me if i am asking how a machine run have you ever you know split uh, a machine and uh, seen uh, what and all or the things which is available inside the machine how uh, emf is being is being generated many students will uh, say a sorry face okay so this is what the Uh, trend what uh, we have today in our education system our industrial exposure and experience is very less without knowing the industry expectation even though if you are having some novelty in our ideas that cannot uh, may, uh, we, we cannot make se- make any sense in the market for uh, or we cannot uh, uh, make it as a good product and commercialize it in the market that is the second one third one is availability of a fund <coughs> we don't we don't have uh, a proper seeding or funding it is very difficult uh, to get uh, funding from the market and also banking sector also they have plenty of their own formalities so that poor financing is seen in the banking sector so so this or this is another one challenge availability non availability of a fund if you are having a good uh, sound knowledge if your uh, uh, product or your idea seems to be novel you will not be having fund and if you are going to seek of fund there also you will be having certain troubles the next one is industry linkages this you know uh, uh, we need to have a specific industry linkages so our industrial linkages will be limited even though if you are having certain industrial linkages our thought process will be different and the industry to whom we are having link and their expectation will be different that is what i am trying to say different objectives their objective will be different and our objective will be different and also if they are asking us to remodel or reshape or to overcome certain uh, cons which is available in our uh, product what we have derived out of our ideas we don't have adequate lab equipments and facilities this can be one challenge okay next one is internal support and uh, structure this we already discussed poor uh, uh, research and development management practice and inadequate organization structure uh, culture for example uh, faculty members don't mistake me when a student normally when a student is interested to go for, go uh, go and do a lab or when when he is interested to test one of his ideas in the lab you do have your own academic uh, barrier somewhere 
without writing internal test you don't want to go to the lab am i correct or not yes students i am in support of you guys okay yes, sir. So that, <laughs> that is an inadequate organization culture as like you know you do have your own ideas within you but you will be in in one way or other somewhere you will be curtailed so that that idea will get uh, be killed at that moment itself you will not come out of that ideas in any uh, any way in the future so this and all are internal support and structure external arrangement that is the last one external arrangement that is like when you are going for a funding agency if every funding agency will have their own objectives then it is very easy for us to categorize it but many funding agencies when you are going and knocking at them they will see like uh, they will have uh, overlapping of roles and uh, roles of uh, roles so that we will be getting confused to whom you should go for this particular product okay for if you want to make this particular idea into a product for example say a switch okay as are like a, uh, uh, a circuit breaker what you are designing is a circuit breaker as far as electrical is concerned you are going to uh, make a electrical circuit breaker uh, which is of a different model Uh, which is not available in the society okay now you are going to market it that is uh, that is a good idea and that you can go now to which funding agency you should go that and all is not known that awareness is not uh, uh, being given for us sufficient amount of knowledge is not there within us last one is lack of effective one stop center what i feel is like if you want to go for a commercialization of the lab technology definitely you should have a one stop center where if you are going and asking they will give all the all the details from a to z as a budding engineer when you are having some innovative thought within yourself when you are going and hitting towards a particular place they should be in a position to give us all the supporting documents and ideas right from a to z so that we need not to run behind all those structure okay so this and all or the few challenges this i am i'm just uh, letting you know when you are many you know after completing your final year you will be having a, a thought process to run your own business you will be your uh, dad or your uh, your one of your relative will own be owning a business and you will be having a thought process to go along with them if that was the case you need to understand what and all are the barriers which you need to overcome if you want to become a successful uh, commercialized commercialization if you if your product needs to be a successful commercialized product in the market last but one okay experience focused mindset for everything if everything need to happen first thing is like you need to have a experience focused mindset not only based upon academic focused mindset you should have a peculiar mindset first one is like learn the technology and discovery from the lab each and every lab is important right from first semester second semester third semester every labs are very important i am uh, for you know i am not uh, behind academics i am with respect to lab okay lab is the place where you can uh, you, you can excel your ideas you you can you can, exp, you can become expertism in your uh, basic knowledge second one is college lab and technology is a tiny replica of the outside world which you are going to get to face that is when you are going to work in an industry or um, if if i ask any of the final year student what is your ambition you will be saying like i want to work in electricity board or like you will say like i i need to work with kirloskar i need to get a job in uh, abb electricals i need to get a job in uh, sneeder uh, sneeder i need to work for bell so this and all will be our uh, aim if that was the case we need to know what is there in powertronics lab what is there in machinery lab how these equipments are being so that's what i'm trying to say the college lab and the technology what we have within us is a tiny replica it's it's, a, it's like a small industry the lab and its facilities are like a small industries small industry this is what you are going to experience soon after the completing your course and rendering i mean entering into the industrial field okay and last one is lab technology is 90 percentage how you use than what it does to you that is the uh, clear cut vision you should have okay instead of complaining what this lab has done for me what this staff has done for me what this college has done for me why i chose mother teresa engineering college why i should i didn't choose that college this college that and all is not going to make any sense okay just you introspect within yourself this is not going to make any sense you just think with the available 
facility what I can earn out of it. That should be your mindset. Okay, this is the place where 90 percentage you should think about how I can use it. Oh, out of uh, I mean, uh, Srinivasan sir, IAP Srinivasan sir, what, in what area he is specialized, what I can learn from him. In this high voltage engineering class, uh, what I can learn out of him. In this machines lab too, what I can learn out of this uh, synchronous motor. What is the difference between a synchronous motor and an induction motor? In which type of industry synchronous motor is being used? Where three phase induction motor is being used? Why many industries, 90% of industries are using three phase induction motor? These types of question masks should come within you and you should ask your faculty members and with the support of applied lab and all those faculty members you should have a mindset and thinking process as like 90 percent is how you can use uh, rather than thinking what it is giving for you okay that is what i this is my last slide you know this is like a experience focused mindset <clears throat> i am just uh, you know uh, i'll just give uh, in a nutshell, what we have discussed in the previous 40 minutes of time, <clears throat> first we have discussed about the difference between research, innovation and uh, commercialization. Later we came, uh, what is meant by commercialization, how you can sell your knowledge, where it starts, it starts with the idea and it, uh, uh, it goes to lab, uh, modeling in the lab, evaluation process, making a prototype, coming to the product and then goes to evaluation, then into the market. If you feel that your product is extraordinary, you can even go for your technology <clears throat> licensing. If that was the case, first you need to understand what is the requirement of customer. Then you, your idea should have a commercial value in the market. And third one is like, you need to understand what type of business I can make in what area. That are the three requisites. Now, three key players are, what is you? Second one is the one you who is going to finance you. And the third one is the funding agency as like non-government or government or banks, whoever it may be. All the three is equally important for a commercialization process. There are certain government rules. And now finally we have ended with few challenges. Challenges will be threatening. But, you know, with your spirit and your self-confidence, definitely you can overcome these uh, challenges. Finally, you should have an experienced way, uh, focused mindset rather than an academic uh, focused mindset. Thank you all the participants for your patient listening. Make all the practical sessions and lab technologies the best investment in your life. Once again, I thank the management, uh, the organizers of this uh, event for uh, giving me such a wonderful opportunity in this auspicious day. Uh, thank you so much. Over to IPS University. Sir. Yeah, sure, sir. It's up to you. Mm. Sir, 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 Dr. Srinivas, Dr. Srinivas, Associate Professor, Department of English. Ah, sir, tell me, sir. Hi, yeah, sir. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the member of this WhatsApp group. That's why I have uh, logged in. Oh, okay, okay, fine, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I'm very happy uh, to have uh, listened to your lecture. But oh, unfortunately, sorry. I missed most most part of your lecture. Just uh -huh. now, just now, ten minutes ago, I, I logged in. Oh, but okay. really, uh, really quite impressive. Um, Thank you, sir. Sir, if, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, I think you focused on you focused on resourcefulness. Yes, that sir. That means whatever what, what equipment or else to what uh, that means how efficient how efficient technology or else how efficient. Uh, infrastructure is available in the lab is yes. immaterial, but how best can we make use of that equipment? Technology, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correct, yes, sir. sir. Yes. And this is one point. And another point, when we teach students, when we impart student, uh, uh, that means any tangible, uh, I mean, any practical uh, knowledge, then yes, we have to correlate, correlate this theoretical knowledge with the current industry needs definitely sir absolutely yes you're right sir that, absolutely that means that means molding the minds of students so that they can get used to their prospective workplace environments yes well said well said sir correlating first we need to create the mindset to the students that will take 90 percentage of our time sir 
if yes, once that is being exactly. done you know remaining all that uh, ideas uh, they will have yes. their own peer groups and they will start enjoying that sir yeah 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 really uh, even really small, even, even very small as like a winding a fan a coil winding a fan a small uh, repairing a mixi that and all uh, you, if you can start sir uh, you know yeah. when when students start uh, earning when they are uh, learning itself that automatically mm. they will uh, they will have an aspiration to become that will be, uh, that will uh, give them an inspiration to become a, uh, an entrepreneur rather than Re working for a certain firm <laughs> yes yes sir really sir very it's really golden word sir resourcefulness and quantitative thinking yes sir yes sir yeah thank excellent sir. Sir. yeah thank, thank you thank you, you so sir. much thank sir. You so much, sir thank you so much i wish i wish to hear you once again If definitely all, sir when time comes i am i am always ready to join with you sir i am having a close association with the scat group <laughs> yeah i'll definitely join sir <laughs> you know okay sir thank thing. you thank you very much sir fine 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 thank you sir वेलकम सर थैंक यू सर 